I wanted to speak on briefly now is the mid zone play. So the mid zone complements, in my opinion, the outside zone in that it looks identical to the pure stretch zone, the first steps or two. The first step or two from the running back, the first step or two from the lineman. It's not, and here's why. Because if you have a covered man or on the outside zone, if, if in, unless he flowed out with him, stepped out, stayed on, however you want to term it, obviously you have to drill it, then the, the covered man looks to dip and rip and pass it to the uncovered man. So he's playing heavy. He's a little bit tighter. You know, he's, he's, he's kind of he's play, crank, playing in the gray area, uh, stepping up with, with his inside foot. He's not really slanting out. He's not really slanting in. Then on the outside zone, you're looking to overtake it with the uncovered player. On the mid zone, it's different. On the mid zone, unless the unless the the the, the defender covering the covered player slants in, then the, the covered player stays on the defender. And the uncovered player, after checking for the in in cut, he knocks it out for the automatic cutback before he climbs. So. Earlier on outside zone, I drew up a defensive end, a four technique, say, stack linebacker, obviously linebacker could be in some side as well. But this defensive end, unless he slants in, if he, if he just attacks it, the, the, the covered man, the covered man's got the outside half. He's going to try to work it out. The uncovered man is going to take a step, make sure he doesn't slant in, get a little bit of depth, get his body in position to where if he does, he could take it, and he's going to go attack that defensive end's hip and knock him out. Be as violent as he can, get on the center of gravity, keep his eyes and shoulders square on the linebacker, but he's going to really try to knock it out because the running back knows on mid zone, that unless I get a slant, I'm going to press it wide, I'm going to cut it back. And the same thing for the uh, center's block. So earlier, we had the center, say he had a three technique, and the three technique's playing heavy, He's going to go to his pull technique and get his depth and run. Now, on this play, he's not doing that. He's doing similar to the guard, the tackle, when he's uncovered. He's going to have to get a little bit more depth just in case it's a slant because he's moved up on the ball. And after he does that, he's attacking that three technique. If that three technique has stayed there, he's going to work it out. And then keep, he's keeping his shoulders square and his eyes up before he climbs up to the linebacker, knowing that the running back is, again, going to press and look to cut it back. When the center has a block by himself, he's going to do like the tackles and guards do. He's going to get his depth. He's going to get his head on the outside half. Got it. He's going to have to take some depth every time. He just has to to get his body where it needs to get, at least some. But once he gets his head on the outside half, he's going to try to catapult that guy out for the ball to cut behind his block as well. So where he was running the bubble earlier, He's no longer running the bubble. He is strictly getting his head on the outside half, getting his two steps down, working his inside arm out, let that ball roll back. He doesn't want to give up penetration. He wants to stay square. He wants to get his head on the outside. He wants to run the defender down the line of scrimmage. It's okay if he gives up a little bit this way after he's pushed the guy you know, several yards, get some, 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 some advancement for the ball to, to run past. So that's everybody. If the tight end has a has a, a tight nine or a six technique, he's got the outside half. The tackle's going to come check the slant, knock it over before he climbs. Now, obviously, you can play with this a little bit. If the tight end has a seven, an outside linebacker, he can arc it, and the tackle can just knock that end out, right? There's different variances you can do. And in general, you want the ball to cut back unless it's a slant. Unless the defensive pinches in, the defensive end pinches in the inside gap, Ball is going to cut back. Backside on midside zone is the exact same as, as stretch zone. Everybody's cutting off. You're getting depth and running. You're having to run at good angles to the second level. You want to seal everybody off. So if you have a play like this with a three technique and a, a backside shade or two eye, 
He's getting the outside half. He's going to work it out. He's got the outside half. He's going to work it out. Center's going to knock it. We're cutting off the backside just as we did earlier. Running back's going to press it. He's going to cut the ball behind the three technique. And it doesn't matter the formation or if it's under center or from pistol or the shotgun. It's the same sort of uh, mentality. So if you can just think outside zone runs here, mid zone runs a different way. First, this look, ball's going to cut behind the five technique. Center knows I'm getting my head on the outside. I'm running it. Same thing for these guys. We're cutting off. However, you want to do this look. We do want to cut the backside off. We want to steal them from pursuit. And then the ball is going to roll a lot more than the outside zone did behind the center's block. It's going to be more of an A gap run at times. So, with that, that's the mid zone. Next video I'll do is how the mid zone and the outside zone go together and mesh kind of the, the harmony of the plays to complement each other and really have the defense, you know, in a, in a, in a pitch 22 or certainly a situation where they're being very reactive. So, this is a value.